Hello now there, everybody. This is it, by the way, in case you were wondering, judging by the title, that's a lot of words. My name is Kona, as you might know, and I'm going to be ranking my top favorite Stranger Things characters. This is the definitive tier list. You cannot go against this. This is just how it's... This is, this is it. This is the truth, okay? I'm obviously kidding. So, before I start this, let me clarify that... Uh, these, the, this tier list is going to be based off like what the characters personally do for me i don't i'm not going to be judging them based on if a character is quote unquote good or well written i'm going to be mostly judging this based on how the characters kind of work for me and and how interesting i find them how compelling they are whenever i see them in a scene how, how likely am i to just go like okay yes i'm interested in what's going on um and with that, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead go ahead and get started. But yes, I would like to clarify before I start messing around with these these characters down here. The these uh, oh there you go. There's my mouse. These rankings that <clears throat> this is not based on how quote unquote good the character is. It's just based on how they work for me. So you might see some rankings that will surprise you. That's just gonna happen. Okay. So I guess should I start here or should I I'm just going to start with Barb and then go go across randomly. So I'm going to I'm going to initially place them in good and then go down unless uh, well maybe not when this gets populated. But Barb is an interesting character in that she was mostly a plot device and she was a very she was a very she she was a character that you were meant to like, right? She was written in such a way that if you cared about Nancy She's kind of an extension of Nancy Wheeler, right? Whenever you see Barb and her role in the series, she is supposed to be concerned for Nancy, and uh, that it's kind of a counterpoint to Nancy's struggle for like identity in season one. But spoiler alert, she does die really early, and I know that there's a huge outburst of support on the internet where people are like, "No, Na uh, Barb shouldn't have died. She should have stick. She should have stuck around for longer." I'm actually okay with 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 uh what happened to Barb's character. It would have been nice to know a little bit more about her, but I feel like <clears throat> her death kind of played in us understanding Nancy better. And also, uh it drove forward the plot and it also uh familiarized us with the with the uh the universe of Stranger Things, how her death was meant to further drive the the idea of like, oh, Maybe Will is actually dead as well because of the Demogorgon. As far as how, I, how much I actually like the character, I thought she was fine, but unfortunately I like barely remember her. I remember her, what she did for the series, and it was very important. But I kind of like just don't remember her, and I don't really... I mean, once again, I like her role, but I don't think she was that pivotal, so I'm going to send her to OK, and immediately I know that that's going to be controversial because I know a lot of people like, like Barb. But... Anyway, um, that's kind of where Barb is for now. Oops, just scrolled up. Did you see that? Oops, you didn't see that. Um, there's nothing up there. So next up, I guess let's just pick another character at random. Who is this? Is this Lonnie? That's uh, Joyce's ex-husband, right? So Lonnie, it's hard to really rank him fairly because he was written to be a character that you dislike. I will say that he didn't quite... He's not quite my least favorite character simply because of the fact that I think it was season two when he shows up, or was that season one? When he shows up at Joyce's house and Joyce says, get out, and then there's an abrupt cut and it shows him getting angry. I thought he was going to beat Joyce and I was ready to, to, to throw a fit. Not necessarily because I don't think that has any place in... Let me just move this up a little bit. I don't think that has any place in a story because I, I sincerely believe that you can write a story about anything. It's just about how you, how you kind of deal with the subject matter. I was just ready to dislike this bastard even more. So as far as he's concerned, I mean, he's probably going to stick in meh. I think he was a very interesting... Once again, these are like character development tools for other characters. They're characters that are written to, fo to, to push forward other characters or a narrative. And... Uh, for for the buyers, uh, I thought I thought that Lonnie did a great job for pushing for Jonathan's and Will uh, Will and Will Will's character and and even Joyce. But I, I, I he was meant to be dis you know you weren't meant to like him so he kind of just sits in the mess here. 
who am I picking next? Um, Alexi? Okay, sure. Let's go with Alexi. So Alexi is an interesting character in that he kind of is a character that is meant to push forward the, the plot. And the, I guess all of them are meant to push forward the plot. But he's also supposed to kind of flesh out Murray, I thought. Um, right here. I know a lot of people love Alexi, and he's kind of like a meme online, I think. And I actually like him as well. I thought it was a very interesting, interesting look at a character that's stuck in a shitty situation that they can't really get out of. Unfortunately, you know, it's, it's important to remember that he probably is in this position because he made a bunch of different decisions before it that led him to that. So I... Um, just because he's all cute and, and cuddly by the end of it, rest his soul, doesn't mean that he was necessarily a fantastic person, but that's not what we're judging them on. We're judging them based on how much I like them and how much I felt like they did uh, for the plot. That's why, you know, Lonnie is an asshole, and he did for Jonathan and Will, but it didn't really feel that consequential, really, in the end, to me, and maybe that's me being silly. But for Alexi... I thought he was. I thought it was a, a very interesting uh, way of like humanizing the Russian conflict in the in the show, because that's a problem that I had with the show was that the minute the Russians showed up, I was like, I was I was immediately like, oh okay, I see where this show is headed. Russians bad, Americans good. Uh, Russians are gonna be doing all this. No no no. Alexei showed a kind of more human side to the whole thing, and. I thought it was very interesting to see. And of course, it was heartwarming see him, seeing him uh, be a friend of Murray. And uh, yeah, just overall, I think he's a solid character. I think he's good. I do have to think about his corpse left in that carnival or that, that the fair. And whoever ran into that, that sucks. Um, let's go with... Is this, this is Mike's mom, yeah? I, I guess I'm kind of getting like non-pivotal characters out of the way first. So Mike's mom, what's her name? I don't remember her name. Um, I don't. I don't remember her name. Uh, overall, a character that's very forgettable for me. Like I don't really think she does much, and the scenes that she is in are kind of uncomfortable to me. I do like that she pushed forward Nancy to kind of. Oh, by the way, these are not ordered. I just kind of slapped them together. Maybe I'll order them later. Um, I do. I do like the scenes where she kind of embraces her kids, but overall, I just. You know, she's just never really had an impact on me. But, you know, she's important enough to be mentioned. I mean, Mike's dad isn't even on this list. So that should tell you how, how that character fares against her. So I'm glad that she's here. And she does play a, a, an interesting role. And I, and, I, and I think she has a very, very subtle characterization throughout whenever we see her in the house and how she reacts to her husband and during arguments and all that. But... Just a character that I didn't necessarily care for a lot. I probably would put her there even if it was ordered. Just didn't care for her a lot. And I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that she's a good, seemingly good mother to Nancy now. But um, yeah, she's, she's fine. Okay, let's go for a major character next. What is a major character? I mean, okay, sure. Let, let's go for, who's this? Is this one of the bullies? I, I didn't like him. Um... That's that's really it. Just very inconsequential character gone after season one, I think. So don't really care for him. Um, let's go with Nancy for a second. This is not her ranking. So Nancy is a very very interesting character, uh, and one of my one of my favorites. I I, I think. I mean, I like all the characters in the show, but I think she's one of my favorites. Whenever she's in a scene, I kind of look forward to it. I. I love her kind of journey to like ident like self-identity and figuring out who she is and not being who people want her to be. Um there was a lot of that in season 1 with like the Steve, I mean there was even a lot of it in season 2 with Steve and Jonathan kind of playing that role where Steve felt like the guy that she should be going for based on the status that she wants to acquire, whereas Jonathan seemed more like a care like a <clears throat> A character that kind of challenged that idea and thus and of course they have shared trauma but by jonathan challenging that idea i felt it, it kind of helped her understand that she doesn't have to be what other people expect her to be she can just be whatever she wants to be and uh 
Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of respect for this character. She is a she is a go getter. I love, I really love go getter characters. Characters that just kind of go like, okay, this has to be done. And uh, like, I mean, remember season three when 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 her mom was like, "Yo, just do whatever you need to do, and if you want to finish this investigation, just do it." And she went for it. I think she's a fantastic character. Also, when she danced with Dustin at the end of season, was that season one? Was that season two? That was season one. When she danced with Dustin at the end of season one, I, I, I thought that was amazing. I love that scene. That was sick. Um, wait, was that season one? What was the end of season one? I don't remember. Oh, no, because Elle was there. So it must have been the end of season two. That's right. The end of season two when she dances with Dustin. <clears throat> I thought that was a great scene and uh, almost made me tear up a little bit. Okay. So going on to... Going on to Lucas. Let's talk about Lucas. So Lucas is an interesting character that I think has a lot of potential, but has unfortunately been untapped as far as I, as, you know, as far as my personal uh, enjoyment of the character goes. Like season one, Lucas, as far as I'm concerned, just did a ton of bitching, right? He was like, oh, don't, uh, she's a weirdo. Leave her, leave her be, which was kind of mostly annoying. Now, granted, I understand the importance of having a counterpoint, having that kind of conflict to drive forward uh, development. And I thought that was cool, but I just found him kind of like, he was just kind of like obnoxious. And then season two, what did he even, season two, he had, he had some nice moments with Max that I really enjoyed. And that's part of the stuff that I want to see. But then season three, he was once again a background character. Like I, I cannot think of a single thing that Lucas did in season three. And that's upsetting. And, and I think, you know, I kind of think that's, a, that's what happened. There's just too many characters to focus on in a single season. So, unfortunately for me, I mean, Lucas is, I'll put him here. Lucas is good friends with Mike. And I think he's a good, he gives him advice, especially in the absence of Dustin in season three. But he just doesn't do much for me because it feels like, it feels mostly like he, well, you know, maybe this is me being an asshole, but to me, it kind of feels like he is defined by the people around him. Like we're supposed to understand his characterization by the people around him rather than by any of his like beliefs and such. Other than season one, because season one, he was firmly caught on that. Like, yo, girls are, or, or, or sorry, you have a girlfriend. Ooh. And then season three was a lot of like, oh, girls are another species. Just really uncompelling viewpoints that don't really encourage me to explore them any further and seem kind of ignorant. And I get it that he's a kid, but just not much. I, I do I do like his presence in the show, but as far as characters that kind of do it for me, I'm just kind of, whenever Lucas is in the scene, I don't feel either negative or positive. I'm just kind of like, there he is. And let's see what he does now. So, you know, just good. He, he, he's fine. I just wish he, he did more. Um, here's eight right that's her number i forget her actual name this character is i don't know if this is controversial but i personally didn't care too much for her mostly because i disagreed with a lot of her philosophies or a lot of her her ideas that she had for l like um like like yes she she it was cool to see that there's another uh character that has special powers much like l but it was a little disappointing to me, as someone who's watched, I mean, mostly because I was comparing it to Avatar The Last Airbender, it was a little disappointing to me that, and this, this carries forth with a lot of the themes in the, in the show, in which they embrace a lot of quote-unquote negative topics that I think could be maybe addressed better. Like, it felt like a lot of the show was focused around... Um, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of her involvement with L was focused around draw your strength from your anger. And, you know, comparing that as someone who has watched Avatar The Last Airbender, where, spoilers, Zuko eventually learns to channel his firebending from positive emotions, I kind of wish that, that, that the topic of like, hey, maybe it's best not to feel all your actions in your life from anger and try to find, and try to find positives to fuel all your actions. And I don't know if that even works with these powers because these powers don't exist in real life. But that was kind of an, uh, that was kind of a, a, something that was a little overall. I look, I thought it was an interesting 11 episode. 
But these characters, the whole gang just didn't do much for me. And maybe that's controversial, but I really think that the stuff that they taught L just wasn't very healthy. And maybe that's the point. But it just wasn't, once again, just wasn't compelling enough to me. And, and you know, that's, that's, kinda, that's kind of it. And we're back. You might not have noticed, but I left there for a little bit. But now I'm back. It's been like an hour. Don't worry about that. Anyway, we're on to the next character. And for the next character, I'm actually going to talk about Joyce. So, Joyce is, again, another kind of go-getter character. Kind of like, uh, kind of like Nancy, which is why I rated her so high. Well, part of the reason why I rated her so high. Joyce is probably, probably my favorite, if not one of, <clears throat> excuse me. One of my top three favorite characters in Stranger Things. There is so much about her that just makes her so amazing. Just the way that she cares about the main cast. The way that she offers... Well, the way that, obviously, she cares about her, her, her boy, as she says it herself. The way that she cares about her kids. The way that she offers Eleven some comfort when, when they're doing the... When, when she's doing her thing in the, in the gym, in the high school, or whatever that was. There's so much about her that is honestly kind of kind of like inspiring, even I would say. Um, just the 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 acting, first of all, the, her her what is it, Winona Ryder? Her acting, first of all, is phenomenal. Like the amount of uh, the the ranges that she has to portray specific facial expressions or ideas is is absolutely fantastic, and just just. There are just so many great moments. A lot of the more iconic moments in this series are from her and the fact that she just kind of does what she wants. When she thinks her boy is talking to her at her house and she sets up all the Christmas lights, a lot of people thought that she was looking kind of crazy. I thought she was, she was, I thought she was fucking sick. Granted, I do have the, the, the extra uh, context of knowing that she was probably right as a viewer as compared to the other characters. But I just love that she just does it. Like when she, when the, in season three, when the magnets are falling off a fridge, I think it is. And, and she instantly goes to, what is it? Mr. Clark? Is that the name of the, the teacher? I might not remember his name properly. He goes to, or she goes to him and just discusses all these phenomena. And, and she, she's, she gets down to the bottom of it all by herself. Well, mostly by herself. She, she has to, you know, she, she is the driving force. Like, you know, obviously Hopper and Joyce have this dynamic where they both kind of push each other and they manage, uh, they, they manage to do a lot of fantastic things together. Um, I always feel like Joyce is such a, such a strong force behind it. I feel like, yes, Hopper has a lot more, you know, ha has a lot more uh, physical strength and, and he has like, you know, he, he, he tends to be the one carrying guns around and, like, shoving people around. But I feel that's equal parts, if not more. Like, I feel like without Joyce, there is no Hopper. Like, I feel like Joyce ends up fueling the drive for Hopper, which is another great character. And, and just, just the overall amazing performances. And I also learned from watching some videos recently that... Originally, she was supposed to drop the one and only F-bomb in the whole series, and I thought that was sick. It's whenever uh, Will is... I think whenever Will is... Kind of, whenever they're, they're getting the mind flare out of Will's body, I think she was supposed to say, get the fuck out of my boy or something, and I think that's sick, and she deserved it. But I don't understand what the ratings and all that. Overall, honestly, I I've been going around and reading... I've been going around and reading people's like favorite characters, like reading their list just to just to psych myself up for this video. And I am shocked at the amount of people that don't have Joyce as their favorite character. Like any scene that Joyce is in, I'm like, all right, what is this crazy bitch about to do? And I, I just love any scene that she's in because she 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 is the star as far as I'm concerned. Uh, her and, you know, let's go ahead and talk about Will. I, I believe that from pure just acting just just how they act these two actors what what's his name noah noah something and winona Ryder. they are incredibly 
they're incredibly skilled at portraying such complex emotions. Like, if you need any evidence of Noah's acting ability, go watch season two again. Look at the the insane faces this this dude makes. Just the 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 screams he lets out. The 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 just such insane like emotional acting range is is ridiculous like this is a fantastic character now if we were to talk about will um i really i i think he might be fantastic i i liked him a lot well okay so season one i kind of didn't care for him i know that a lot of people cared about him i didn't really care for him season one season two i thought his acting was phenomenal season three unfortunately he had a little bit he had a lot more of a of a of a he, he didn't have as he didn't play as active of a role he was kind of like a background character he was just kind of around to, to to have his like mind flare spidey senses as my partner said um so he didn't really play that much of an integral role but i really enjoy his character and just the all the stuff that he's been through like that scene dude that scene in season three where he's like he's still wanting to have fun and everyone else has grown up I thought it was a very interesting scene that is obviously talked about in many other forms of media, but I, I it, it's one that I have a soft spot for and, and I get particularly emotional about. So, fantastic. Uh, overall, just a fantastic character. He is probably the lowest of the fantastic. I was originally going to put him in good. Mm, we might revise this, but he's a very, very good character. And, I, I, you know, we'll, we'll see where I put him. For now, I'm going to put him like this just so it's a little bit, I guess it's less balanced if I put it like that. I'm going to put him in good. But but just just very very great character. I I just wish we got a little bit more about him. Okay, so on to Lucas's sister Erica. So this is a character that actually ended up really growing on me. Uh, in season three. Now season two, she was annoying as hell, which I'm pretty sure she was she was supposed to be. But season three, I really enjoyed her character arc he had like she had like a very self-contained very very not necessarily subtle but very i guess relatively simple but interesting character arc where you know she realized that yes she is a quote-unquote nerd and she's not as different as the people that she constantly like okay so she doesn't like she doesn't seem to necessarily care for or like lucas or dustin but she's not really too different from either of them like she ends up being a huge nerd. She knows, <clears throat> doesn't she? She's the one that brings up Plank's con. Oh, I don't remember if that's Robin or her, but I know that she knows a lot about like math because she does that. She she does like some crazy equation. Um, she likes My Little Pony. She's just really into a lot of nerdy stuff, and then she realizes, oh, and she knows a lot about like the government system and such. That's when she realizes, oh wait, maybe I am a nerd. And by the end of the season three, it was a very feel good moment when she was like, oh. Actually, I um I am a nerd, and that's fine. And and I remember Dustin gives him a bunch of like, I guess his old school books or something. So overall, I really really liked this character. Um, I would say that she goes like here, and Lucas. I'm starting to doubt his placing because I much prefer her over Lucas. Like, once again, Lucas just doesn't have in terms of like character development. What do we know? He is particular he is very weary of girls. He is untrusting of people trying to break into the group, quote unquote break into the group. And he likes Max. I think there was a little bit maybe more development when Max and him were having that little conversation on top of the 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 bus in the junkyard. But I don't really remember much and maybe that's on me. Maybe I wasn't giving him the attention he deserved, but like I really am not a fan of Lucas and I I like Erica way more. So yeah, I, I I thought she was hilarious, and I hope we get to see more of her, but I don't think we will. Um. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's go on to. Let's see who do we who do we talk about here? Let's talk about Robin. Robin is a character that actually caught me by surprise because when season three started, and Steve was working at uh the scoops or whatever the 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 ice cream shop is called. And this character showed up. I was actually quite confused because I was like, oh, am I supposed to know who this is? And no, she was a completely new character. She was Robin. And just the way that she slowly had this... Well, I mean, she it, it, it didn't feel... 
I mean, I'm I'm straight up I'm straight up referencing another video that I saw based on this, but in that video, I forget who it was. My apologies. They mentioned how Mad Max had like a whole episode themed after her, and it was like a big deal, and the whole season was like, how do we include her here? Whereas with Robin, she was Steve's coworker, and she just hangs out with Dustin and Steve, and she it's very natural kind of it felt more like a natural progression rather than than max which to me a lot of the time hey i love max okay but to me a lot of the time max felt kind of shoehorned like we have to talk about max right now because she's the she's the big new thing whereas robin just kind of existed and steve and dustin were allowed to do their own thing related to robin but separate from her and uh, yeah overall she's very funny she's very competent uh, obviously, in the way that she learns to translate the Russian stuff and learns about the hideout in the first place. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, just just really enjoy her. I love the scene with her coming out to uh, to Steve and, and how... Uh, that was just a beautiful scene, just how casual everything is, especially in the 1980s. That was just a wonderful, wonderful scene. Very Made me very, very happy. Um, so, yeah, I think she's fantastic. Um, and I, I don't know if I like her more than Nancy, but she's getting there just because of how, just, just what a competent, realistic, grounded, fun character that never really felt like, uh, you know, never, she had her gripes, right? She wasn't necessarily, same with like Erica, right? She had her gripes. She wasn't necessarily the nicest person, but it, it didn't feel like comically evil um which is a, a problem that i i have with you know people like oh granted i don't know i don't know lonnie's baggage but um it didn't feel like for example lucas in season one it all felt a little bit he felt very close-minded and it all almost felt like this is the agenda that i have to push forward that we don't allow newcomers in the in the group etc etc with robin she felt way more reasonable and i think that's why i really 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 like her character Okay, so let's go on to... Sure, let's talk about Mike. Um, Mike is a character that I really enjoyed in season one just because he was like the, the embodiment of loyalty in terms of friendship, right? Like, it was very, it was very interesting, uh, very, very neat, very cool, very cute how mike still kept going like no we have to keep looking for will we have to keep looking he's alive i know it whereas dustin and lucas in the first season were just willing to be like no he's dead we should move on like he's dead let's just stay home and mope and uh, you know that's not necessarily an unrealistic unrealistic situation you know with like grieving and all that but mike was just such a loyal friend the whole time and he believed like my friend is still out there i know he's out there and just because of that, I thought he was great. I would have maybe put him in Fantastic if it was just season one. Um, season two, he kind of takes more of a backseat. And it, it, I mean, I don't really remember much about season two regarding Mike. So maybe that's my fault. What happened during season two? He did go show up. You know what? He was still fine in season two, actually. He went to the, to the lab and was there for Will the whole time while he was getting... <clears throat> like medical attention season three it, it was, i think the show kind of did him a little bit dirty like yes i think that um 11 and him were hanging out way too much to the point where it was maybe a little bit unhealthy but i also thought that it was kind of i don't know i i really appreciated how mike was always standing up for 11 because you know, a lot of people were like, oh, no, just let, we're just going to sit around and let her find this. I understand that maybe that was the appropriate thing, but it didn't seem like many people really considered the repercussions of her overexerting her powers, you know? So, I don't know. I like Mike. He's not one of my favorite characters. Um, in fact, I'd put him, like, here, maybe? Eh, no, I'll put him here. He's not one of my favorite characters. He's pretty high up there, but overall, he's just, he, he's very good. He's very good. And I really enjoyed him in season one, and he's been overall pretty solid. On to Max. So if this had been season two, Max would have been up here, because I really enjoyed uh, Max in season two. Despite what I said about them making a big deal out of her, I still really, I still thought that she was completely reasonable, and 
realistically patient with the group, right? I didn't think that any of her character progression was like unrealistic. She wanted to be part of this group and they kept slinking away to talk about a secret. That completely made sense that she would get upset about it. Um, season three, though, like she was she's still very good. And I understand why the progression was the way that it that it was like, like, I understand. Eleven needed time away from Mike, so Max pulled Eleven away from Mike and they kind of started hanging out. I understand that Max is a kid. Um, I understand that the whole point of the that whole scenario is to bring up like uh the whole idea of like it's like a uh, like a very binary situation where it's like well boys are stinky and clingy and girls are you know more gossipy and whatever. I understand and, and it kind of allowed Eleven to experience a whole different lifestyle which helped her find herself. But overall, I just I didn't find it particularly compelling, though I do understand the point of it. Um, so I'm going to have to put her like maybe like here. No, nah, she goes here. I, I thought she was a very, very interesting character. Just her involvement in season three wasn't compelling enough. And I, once again, this is an, an, an additive thing. So I'm taking all the experiences from season one or in Max's case, season two to season three. So once again, if this had been season two, she might have been my favorite character or she might have been up here or up here. But because it's season three as well, and because of the fact that I didn't find it particularly compelling, despite, you know, I'm not mentioning all the Billy stuff just because, well, we'll get to Billy here in a second. Um, just not particularly, just not particularly compelled in season three, but I, st I still see was, I still thought she was very solid and, and uh, I really, I really enjoy her presence in the show. Um, just season three, it kind of dragged on a little bit because I understand the importance of discussing the topics of like, hey distance yourself from someone and find your own personality and your own person, your own goals. It's just something that I don't particularly care about, like, like reading about. So it's not that it was a bad topic. It's just one that I don't particularly care about. Billy. Billy's an interesting character. And maybe this is controversial, but I'm going to put him down here. Now, listen, he's, he's certainly the, the best of the meh. By the way, these are not bad characters. This is just the meh tier. It's kind of like... I might be even put her down here in the meh tier, honestly. I really don't, like... Probably like there. Um, I guess then it, it kind of unba unbalances the tiers. With Billy, look, I understand that his life was very troubled. And I actually felt really bad for him throughout all of Season 3 when you'd have these glimpses of his eyes and he would just start crying. Or with the sauna scene when he was like, screaming out, like, Max, I'm sorry, or I didn't mean to do it, he made me do it. I felt really bad for him, and his backstory is very tragic, and that is all fine and dandy, like it is written very well. I just don't particularly care about the character. I do understand his struggles, and I do understand, I, I think they did a fantastic job of writing him, but in terms of what the character did for me, a lot of the time when I saw him, I just kind of went like, oh yeah, here's this character that is very well written that I don't particularly care about. Um, so I guess, you know, in terms of that, he probably deserves to be like up here. Because these two characters I actually just don't care about. You know what? Maybe I will slap. Maybe I will slap Barb like down here. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Billy. I just don't particularly care about him. I don't think he's badly written. I just don't really, you know. I never really got excited when he was in a scene. I, I understand what he's supposed to be. I understand what he's supposed to put out. I understand his backstory. Just nothing particularly. Nothing that really spoke to me. It was sad, but I, I guess maybe it's because I can't relate to it much. I don't know, but very good. You know, I don't mind his inclusion in the show at all. I am sad that he died. I really wish we could have gotten to, we, we could have gotten to see the healing process behind it. I was talking with my partner about this and they thought that uh, Billy probably wouldn't have been able to keep going just, you know, because of the fact that he pretty much straight up killed Heather and all like a ton of people and i don't think he would have been able to live on either but i would have loved to see that process however painful it would have been of someone that broken and how they cope you know so overall i mean i think this is a fine order here like maybe i'll do it like this i know i keep i keep going like back and forth i was more excited to see barb than 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 uh mike's mother but yeah billy's fine he, he is he's okay um, let's talk about Murray. Oh, shit. What's his name? Murray? Murray? I don't remember. Um, surprisingly, 
one of my whenever he says most things in the show it kind of feels to me like he is a, a, the voice of the audience like like whenever jonathan and nancy were being really awkward ar- ne- uh, around each other and he would go on and be like just get it over with and fuck or whatever it, it was that he said or whenever it was joyce and, and uh hopper and he was like we all know that y'all just want to fuck so just fuck um those moments are funny uh i don't know that the it feels kind of i i have a love-hate relationship with those moments because i think they're funny but it also feels like maybe they don't have enough time to resolve these relationships uh naturally or they can't find a way of writing you know it's a way of fast forwarding kind of a conflict which i appreciate but also i will admit that sometimes it feels a little lazy no one's gonna kill me for that right sometimes it feels a little lazy where where i'm like not not lazy you know they don't have enough time i understand overall i like him a lot whenever he's in any scene i i i kind of look forward to it i would argue that he's one of my favorite he he might be up top of good tier because i just really enjoy every scene that he's in because he's so over the top um sometimes he does get a little annoying when he just starts shouting all the damn time but i think he's fine i like him whenever he's in a scene i was stoked that we saw him again in season three and i think we saw him in a trailer for season four so i'm excited to see what what he gets up to i bet you this character is the next to die um okay let's talk about steve harrington so this is not his rating steve is a character that was written in such a way that you were meant to dislike him in season one and it is it is crazy the there is here let me put them next to each other it is to me it is very interesting how these two characters are nearly identical um in terms of the development that they've gone through but the interesting thing is that i kind of feel like steve as troubled as he was has gone through it in maybe a healthier way um yeah just Steve was, was meant to be a character that was written in such a way that we would dislike him in season one, right? He was meant to be a jackass. But in season, in season, in season two, he was good as well. Like, like it, it seemed like a fairly reasonable makeup. Like him coming to terms with, yes, the fact that Nancy wasn't with him, but maybe she was happy. And season three, he's kind of grown into, him, into his own his own little pocket and and he he hangs out in the 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 scoop shop and he has his own thing going on and you know excuse me i mean to in order to see the the development all you have to do is think about the fact that season one i'm pretty sure steve called jonathan some sort of slur uh related to like being a homosexual and in season three we have this beautiful scene i mean look this is a screenshot from that very scene where where robin comes out to steve it just feels like a character these two characters are pressured by society to feel like they have to be a certain way because they're both pretty and they both uh feel like they have to live up and impress people that they really shouldn't have to but um you know they really don't have to do that and seeing steve's blossom seeing steve blossom into that kind of level to the point where several times he risks his lives for the kids it feels like it feels like he's understood his role to a degree and he's still working towards self-improvement in a way that isn't sappy or cheesy because he's still like kind of he's still like a a, a quote-unquote funny man he's still kind of a douche but he is the kind of douche that he wants to be, and I really respect it. And, you know, once again, any scene that he's in, I'm just kind of like, there's the boy. And I feel like this is not an unrealistic take. I feel like a lot of people really, really, really enjoy this character, and, you know, for good reason. So I'm going to put him here. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll rearrange stuff at the end. Okay, so this is Bob, right? Bob was an okay character. Now I'm going to put him up down here immediately and i know that this might be controversial um i had a long conversation about this with my partner i keep mentioning my partner because we watched we 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 binge stranger things together i thought bob was a fantastic character a ray of sunshine very positive very happy any scene that he was in i would end up smiling i just wish we could have gotten more time with him so to speak 
because it felt like, you know, this is based on what the characters do for me specifically. When I go into Stranger Things, I'm not looking to like smile. I'm looking to, I'm looking to see struggles and strife and disagreement and supernatural shit. And Bob was a very happy, very positive, very supportive, you know, dude, uh, boyfriend or stepfather. He was just excellent. And he's a great positive character. It's just in terms of the show, whenever I would go into it, I'm not particularly looking to experience just being happy. I, I wish there was more depth to it. I know that he got bullied when he was a kid. That's briefly touched upon. I know that he knows how to code. That's briefly touched upon. So he, there's more to him. It's just nothing that particular, it's particularly compelling to me. There's not many scenes where I'm like, okay, let's see what Bob's up to. Let's see what he's doing. Because he's just a happy-go-lucky guy. He goes to Joyce's house and brings little puzzles, and he's like, let's do it. And that's cool. It's just not something that I was particularly looking forward to because I was more distracted by the overall plot and by the struggles from things like Nancy and Steve's... Nancy's very obvious struggle for identity or, or Steve's slightly more subtle struggle for identity or, like, Max's inclusion in the group or Eleven's just uh, struggling to understand herself. And all of this. And, and so Bob is a very good character. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not particularly, just not particularly enticed by, by the themes that were brought into the story by him. But that's not to say he's bad. I really enjoyed his presence in the show. And I'm really fucking sad he died. Like, I was really, really, really sad. So, everybody, reverence for Bob. Reverence for Bob. Okay, let's talk about Dustin. Dustin is an interesting character. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and slap him to fantastic. I feel like I feel like these are like the agreed these three these four here are like the agreed upon. Maybe not Robin. These three are agreed upon as being fantastic characters. When it comes to Dustin, um I, I found season two Dustin fucking uh just I, I did not like him whatsoever. I understand why it was important for his character development to kind of have this, this, uh, development with Dart all by himself. Um, you know, cause it's something that, that he has to learn to mature by himself and be like liable for his, for his, for his mistakes. I mean, he hid the death of Muse and I think he can clean about it in the end. I, I think, I don't know, but yeah, season two, he was kind of unbearable because he kept hiding all these facts that seemed pretty vital. I mean, that's a lot. That's an issue I have with this show a lot is like Will has episodes and he doesn't want to tell anyone. Dustin has this like dart in his house and he doesn't, he doesn't want to tell anyone. Granted, I understand why these things are not touched upon, but it kind of it kind of is a recurring theme in the show. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about this. It's a problem. OK, now let's talk about it. Which I guess is how it would happen in real life, but Dustin season two was unbearable. Dustin season one was okay. I mean, I really liked how he was just like, everybody get your shit together and let's focus on the problem. And Dustin season three was, I mean, the, there's a Steve Harrington and Dustin pair, which is like, I mean, they just have such good chemistry and they bounce off each other. It's, it's really a joy when they're kind of doing their, their own thing there. So, so I really like Dustin. Um, he might be my favorite out of the, the main cast, but, but yeah, he's cool. Um, I don't like him as much as some of the other characters. I, I, I noticed that I lean more towards the, the, the older characters, which I think is kind of unusual. A lot of people will be like, oh, I like Eleven as my favorite character, or I like this and this. Speaking of which, we're going to talk about Eleven. Eleven is a very difficult character for me to write. The reason for this is because I think she's very interesting and I'm glad she's in the show and I'm glad that she has all these developments. She is the character that has by far the most baggage. I'd have to, I'd have to wager a guess. Either her or Hopper, I think. I think that's what we're looking at here. The problem with Elle for me at least, and I'm not trying to sound like an ableist asshole, but in terms of writing, there's a lot of things that I wish Elle could uh, kind of 
discussed more at length. Like I, I, I use this example. She's more like a like a broad, the brush stroke across the canvas rather than a small paintbrush little details about what she thinks. Like yes, it is a fact that she was annoyed at Hopper for whatever she was doing or what? Sorry, whatever he was doing. It is a fact that she loves Michael. It is a fact that she is friends with Max. I just wish she had more of, uh, and that seems to be happening with season four. And by the way, it is not a problem that she can't talk. That is not a bad character trait. Um, once again, I'm talking more about the characters, about, about characters as, as they work for me. And the thing with Eleven is that a lot of the time these shows will rely on how expressive the characters are to kind of co kind of com uh, convey their their information and their understanding of their surroundings. It's a little difficult with Eleven because instead of you know the scene, let's say there's you you asked hello Eleven, how do you feel about Fortnite? And I feel like in the show, all that you would get would be fun. And that's it. Once again, nothing wrong with that. But the problem is that I like Eleven too much because I think she's really cool and it upsets me how little we get to know about her. I know that that might work for some people. I know a lot of people like very uh, characters that don't speak a lot. I understand that. Just for me though, I wish that we could get more of... It feels like a lot of the time... Okay, so the, the, it's a lot of show, not tell. So you go into the weird uh, dark dimension with the with the water, and Elle is telling us about, hey, what's what's happening? What's happening with Billy? Where is he? Or or, or, or how do you feel about Billy's uh, backstory? And a lot of what we see is Elle either hyperventilating, screaming, crying, or hugging someone. And I kind of wish she had more of an opportunity to at least. Like, okay, sure, hug whoever you want to hug. And then sit down and just be like, oh, so this was upsetting to me because of this and this. How do you, how do you feel about this? Like, what does it mean to be this and this? And she does have those moments, but she's just, she doesn't, she doesn't say enough, you know? And I kind of feel like the show is more, I, I don't know. It, it just doesn't feel very fulfilling to me. Once again, there's nothing wrong with her. Um... You know, and, and, and another thing with the show is that I can only take badass, badass bitch stands there with hand extended and crushes something for so long before it starts to feel a little bit tiring for me. I would be, I kind of want to put her at the top of good, but like, I, this is going to get me in some hot water, but I mean, she's very good. I mean, I look forward to Murray all the time and I, you know, so that should let you know that I look forward to seeing what Eleven does, but it, it, she's just a little too i don't want to say one note because i feel like that'll land me in some hot water but oops i guess i've said it um here's here's hopper hop hop uh which we know is live for season four hopper is a very good character he's gonna go like he's gonna go like he's gonna go like here uh he's gonna go like here I like Hopper a lot. I don't know why he fell off so much for me in season three. I mean, hey, his quote unquote death in season three was legendary, right? Like everybody cried like a little baby. That note at the end made me ball my fucking eyes out. The the note that he left L, like that fucked me up real bad. He's a cool character. He, once again, Joyce and him are kind of inseparable. Like they work in tandem. Um, I just, I just kind of feel like. Joyce to me is more impressive, you know, from a, from an acting standpoint because she expresses way more, way more emotions, and 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 that is that is inherently part of the way that the characters are written. There's nothing to say, nothing to say about the actors. Um, you know, uh, Hopper, I forget what his actor, what his, what uh, the name of the actor that plays Hopper is, but he's supposed to be more like jaded. You know, he's closed off. That's part of the. That's why the note at the end of the show hits so hard. Um, I just don't particularly... I don't know. Do I really... Hmm. I don't know. Season 3 was really hard to watch. Not because he was written poorly, but, but because there was a lot of suffering for poor old Hop. Um, 
yeah i i and season two as well man what a sad character i might put him here uh, or maybe I'll, maybe i will put him up there i don't know the more i think about him the more i'm like damn this character is sick maybe i'll put him up there i'll put him up there why not um i'm excited to see more i'm a little worried about season four and the way that they're gonna deal with him being like brainwashed by russians but i guess i guess we'll see overall he's been very enjoyable and you know what he actually made his way back up to best because i thought about it for a little bit mr clark good i like mr clark um nothing wrong with him he goes he goes He goes here. I know I like him more than Mike. Um, it's 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 terrible, but yeah. I mean, I just like characters that. Ah, uh, but he has like such little depth, though. Like I can't, in good conscience, be like Bob is good. Well, at least he's. I don't know. It felt like Mr. Clark was a little bit more involved. Uh, it feels like Mr. Clark is that his name? I I might be calling him the wrong name. Should I Google that? It feels like he was a more realistic depiction of a character that is positive. Um, rather than... Uh, I feel like Bob was kind of hiding his real personality at times. It is Mr. Clark. I just Googled it. Whereas Mr. Clark feels more genuine to me. And maybe that's... Maybe that's... That's... Miss... No, you know what? Let's put him... Let's put him here. Let's put him here. Um, yeah, you can see that the, the happy characters are like all in this line here. I'll put him, I'll put Alexi down and, uh, yeah, this is fine. Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Clark just felt more genuine and it seems to me like he actually cares. Uh, Bob felt a lot like putting on a per almost like a personality, not necessarily faking it, but I don't know. It's just, just not as compelling. Mr. Clark actually has bearing on the plot, so he's quite a bit more interesting. And then Jonathan. Jonathan is a character that unfortunately had very little to do in season three. But I thought he was excellent in season one. And I thought he was excellent in season two as well. So he, he deserves to be up here and good, I think. Um, overall, just, just a very solid character. I loved... Seeing his like struggles to to like 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 blah, sorry like when he confronted Lonnie that was sick when he beat the shit out of Steve that was sick um his interactions with Nancy the the weird tension that they have right now based on what's happened in their relationship is very interesting to me uh I love seeing the way that they kind of dance around each other in terms of the happenings in their lives and shit. I think it's actually quite, quite, quite cool. Quite cool to watch. Um, but it's interesting because season three, he didn't really have anything. Any, he, did, he really didn't do anything that wasn't related to Nancy, huh? So that was a little strange, but yeah, I kind of feel like they dropped the ball for him on, episode, on, on season three, but he still remains like a really solid character. Very proactive, very up and at him, you know, go, a go getter kind of. But with a slightly more realistic and maybe even pessimistic outlook at the world, which I think makes him interesting. It makes him very interesting to observe how he, how he analyzes the situations. He's still very much protective of the people he loves. Like, if there's an issue with Will, he's like, all right, let's go. But he's still very much more grounded, less likely to do some wild shit, more likely to want to sit back analyze the situation and then go for it rather than just uh you know rather than just go for it like nancy or especially joyce would do so i think this is my list i'm gonna look over it really quick and see if there's anything that i disagree with yeah this i think this it goes like this i think that's the order there this one's gonna be difficult to organize hold up Hmm. Murray, I think maybe he's too high up. I do enjoy Murray, though. I think this is fine. Um, maybe Mr. C Mr. Clark could go down here. I'll keep him up here just for some just for some controversial thoughts, uh, in the in the 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 tier list. Um. 
Okay, you have to go like down here, I believe. Maybe like that. Yeah, this looks good. Um yeah, Robin. Uh No, nah, I love Nancy. I love Nancy. Yeah, this looks this looks about correct. The only thing I would change is maybe this. Thinking about Elle, I really like her, but mm, Yeah. This might be fine. So mm, uh Yeah, this looks correct. Okay, well, this is my tier list for my favorite Stranger Things characters. This is the definitive one. There's nothing wrong with this tier list. It is a fact that this is the order that your characters must be in, okay? So, yeah, hey, let me know how you feel about my tier list. Let me know how you feel about the characters. Anything that you disagreed with, anything that you agreed with, any hot takes? Do you want to give me some, you want to tell me some, some, some crazy, oh, actually, I'll have you know that Lonnie is up here in the best tier you want to tell me that let me know in the comments uh yeah this is my tier list joyce and hopper at the as as my favorite characters maybe i would put steve up there because i just really enjoy his character there it is i'm leaving it like this uh yeah okay thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you all in the next video let me know your thoughts on the tier list and uh yeah uh, i'll see you on the next one Bye bye